Hey guys, so we have a lot of parents bringing their children into SoulFit and one of their primary concerns is often, well, how do they find shoes for their kids' feet? And we thought we'd put this little video together just to kind of hopefully give some of the parents out there uh, a brief guideline of things to look for when they're buying shoes for their children. So unfortunately, as you can see from that quote, shoe selection for children is predominantly based on old dogma and also not surprisingly marketing. Now it's not to say that the current footwear landscape doesn't have its place, but it's probably not where we should be starting our children off with. Now we're humans uh, and how humans learn to adapt to hard ground is by bending their knees, by leaning forward, by putting their foot more below them. So if we put our children in these really, really stiff, overly constructed shoes, we lose all those cues and that ability to learn how to walk properly. Now let's just do a really simple analogy. And, and let's say we wanted to take a young child and protect them from a very hot stove or very sharp glass. And so we put a big, thick glove on their hand. Now the problem is, A, they're never gonna learn to not touch that hot stove, but B, if you took that glove off in five to 10 years, you've lost a lot of dexterity and muscle control with the fingers. And it's the same thing with our feet. So let's look at a few things that we look at when we're recommending footwear for children. Okay, so the first one may seem pretty obvious, but it's really just trying to find a shoe that matches the shape of your child's foot. Now, if you look at any young child's foot, they're generally gonna be the widest at the end of the toes. But if you look at most footwear for children, it's usually widest at the base of the toes, which can cause a real pinching of the toes and lead to misalignment down the road. So if you take the insole out of the shoe when you're going to buy the shoe, have your child stand on the insole. If their toes are splaying over the side, try to find something that maybe is a little bit more square and stays wider up towards the end of the shoe. Uh, buying shoes that are too long. This is a problem that we see a lot. Now, especially if you're buying something that is overly constructed, these shoes have these little ridge lines which make the shoe bend at a certain spot. And if the child's toes are too far back, the shoe won't bend in the right spot. So really just trying to mimic the child's bare foot when you're buying shoes. So our feet are pretty miraculous in that they bend, they stretch, and they move in all kinds of ways to be able to distribute forces properly when we're walking or running. So if a shoe is very, very stiff, we take away the foot's natural ability to be able to do that. So again, looking for footwear, minimalist, flexible is what we want. Okay, so the next one is a toe spring. And toe spring is really just the elevation from the toe to the ground at the front of the shoe. Now, ironically, why this is important is that if you have a shoe that's very, very stiff, they need to put that rocker sole at the front to help the foot move properly. But we don't want our child's toes up in the air all day. You know, we want our child's foot's feet to develop properly and we want their toes to be engaged. So again, we wanna keep those shoes fairly flat and we wanna eliminate the shoe being really curved up the front along with the stiffness. And the last one that's really important is the heel height. Now, if we look at most children's shoes, they're elevated about an inch from the heel to the toe. Now, this is at a, for a nine-year-old kid, this would be similar to an adult wearing a two-inch heel relative to height. Now, with the obvious issues of having to walk a little bit differently to accommodate that higher heel, that's a potential problem. But also more importantly, the calves and the Achilles on the back of the leg get very shortened, which can also lead to a lot of long-term issues. So same thing as before, common theme here, shoes flat, not a big elevation at the back, and fairly flexible. So let's look at a few quick reasons why we maybe would want a little bit more structure in a shoe. Um, and the first one would be pain. Now, we never want our kids to be in pain. So if there's discomfort, take a child to a qualified professional, find out where it's coming from. And in often cases, a more structured shoe will be recommended in the short term. However, once we fix the source of the problem, we usually wanna get the child back into that more flexible barefoot style shoe again. Uh, the second case would be congenital issues. You know, if there's an actual deformity of the foot, which is usually caught fairly early in development, we may need to have a more structured shoe for longer periods of time. 
Uh, thirdly, different sports. Um, as humans, we're designed to walk and run, so that's why we want to keep those shoes as minimal as possible for those activities at an early age. But if we look at soccer, we look at basketball, we look at tennis, any of those sports that require side-to-side -side support, again, a more structured shoe might be necessary. And finally, there's the coolness factor. And as children get older, it becomes more and more difficult to necessarily get them in the shoes that they should be wearing. Because let's face it, you know, this shoe here, it lights up and it's frozen. I mean, I think of my niece, it'd be really hard to talk her out of wearing this kind of a shoe, even though it's too stiff and too high in the heel. So I think it's oftentimes important with children to look at compromise. So if they're wearing a shoe that you know is less than ideal for the reasons we mentioned before, try to make sure they spend more time barefoot around the house. Try to make sure you're loosening up their calves to prevent those, those muscles getting shortened on the back of their leg. So compromise is key here. So we know it can be really difficult to find shoes that are doing the proper job for our child's foot. So we've listed in the text below just a few brands that you might want to look for that do mimic a child's barefoot foot a little bit better. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. And if you have any questions, we'd love to hear from you in the comments down below.